When I'm training for professional competitions, men and women always ask me for advice. To women, I say push yourself harder than you ever have before and go beyond your comfort zone. Focus on your goals. Men, if I am willing to push myself to become Mr. Olympia in 2022, then I only have one thing to say to you. Bring your A-game. Here we go again. Hey, all my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel, where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your host, femininity coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So I'm coming to you today with a sad story of a young 24-year-old lady who officially her status is missing. Uh, her name is Felicia Johnson, and this is just not a good, this is not a good look. This is not a good, it don't look good. It does not look good. Um, my condolences to her family. Um, but why am I bringing you this tale? And why did I name it How Women Gamble With Their Lives? I'm going to read an article to you. I'm going to share. And I'm going to read the article. Hopefully, you guys will be able to uh, follow along. Okay. I mean, sorry about that. Okay. Timeline reveals chilling details of Felicia Johnson's disappearance. The search continues for the body of Felicia Johnson as well as for the man charged with her murder. The 24-year-old from California went missing in Houston on April 16th. Houston police have named Chukwebuka. Nuobo, Nuobodo, if I mess that up, I'm sorry, um, 28, the suspect in the killing. He's been charged with murder and tampering with evidence, but is still on the run. I think we got work to do and we are ready to do it. Texas EcuSearch founder Tim Miller said it was his volunteer group that found Johnson's purse in Bear Creek Park, close to where Johnson's family found her phone. Although Houston police believe Johnson was murdered, they still have not found her body. Bear Creek Park is thick in some areas. There are little road that, roads that go off, some little areas that would be simple to pull in and dump something and get out without being seen. Miller said, my fear is now, hopefully I'm wrong, is this is one of the cases where she is never going to be found. According to court documents, the timeline, uh, homicide detectives have laid out, and we're going to go over that. Um, on April 16th at 2.56 a.m., Johnson is last seen at the Intercontinental Hotel uh, in the medical center. She gets into an Uber that HPD said was ordered by Nuobodo. So he orders her an Uber to come to wherever, I guess, his house or whatever. Detectives said he responded to an ad Johnson placed online. The Uber took Johnson to his old um, address on Winchase. Then he picked her up and took her to his apartment on South Richmond, according to police. So he thought he was smart. He had the Uber to pick her up and take her to an old address and not where he was currently. An hour later, his car is seen on surveillance video leaving the complex. And at 5, 12 a.m., Johnson's phone connects with the cell tower near where her family finds it in Bear Creek Park later that day. The next two days, HPD said, receipts show he took out money and purchased supplies. His internet searches included things like most forested part of Houston. On May 13th, detectives got search warrants for his car and apartment. He was taken into custody during a traffic stop, but it is unclear when he was released. In his apartment, investigators found very strong support of Johnson's DNA 
In his car, they found a gun, knife, and shovel. So I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to come back to you guys. And we're going to share also um, the other article that is very important, I do believe. Let's go ahead and share that. So, <clears throat> okay. I want to see if I can. Man, now? No, I don't want to do that. Anyway, it always mixes me up when it doesn't have the little magnifying glass. I really don't like that. Here we go. You can do it like this. Here we go. Okay. Man now charged with murder in Felicia Johnson's case was released from custody after her death documents say he is charged with murder and tampering with physical evidence. According to court documents, he was in custody about a month ago, but was released. And it's like, why? Why did you do that? Houston, a man charged with murder in connection with the, the disappearance of a 24 year old woman searched for multiple ways to destroy evidence and get away with the crime. Court documents say I can't pronounce his name. 28 faces two felony charges in the disappearance of Felicia Johnson. He is charged with murder and tampering, fabricating physical evidence. According to documents, he is not in custody. Documents obtained by KHOU 11 News shows he made multiple searches for ways to destroy evidence. There were also searches of possibly how to dispose of a body and if police can check phone records of a dead person. Johnson was reported missing on April 16th. Her father believed she disappeared after interviewing for a job uh, at an adult entertainment club in Houston's Northwest side. So this is what this young lady was doing, okay? What happened? Police said an investigation revealed Johnson left the hotel in Houston's medical center in the early morning hours of April 16th. According to the documents, he ordered the Uber ride for Johnson after she posted an advertisement on an escort website, right? Plot thickens. He then picked Johnson up at an apartment complex in a 3200 block of Winchase Boulevard, which is the address of an apartment from which he recently moved. Police said he then took Johnson to his current residence on South Richmond Avenue and killed her before disposing of her phone. Police said it is believed that he disposed of Johnson's body a few days after the murder. Documents say he received treatment in his right hand at a local clinic on the morning of April 16, claiming he cut himself while opening boxes. So she was probably fighting. Uh, new details. He is seen on surveillance footage with a bandage wrap on his hand and while at Walmart purchasing trash bags, a flashlight, and towels on April 16th and 17th, according to the documents. He also purchased a mechanical saw from Walmart and Home Depot. Her body has yet to be recovered, but investigators said that during a search of his apartment on Richmond, they found DNA evidence that is a strong match for Johnson. On April 20th, investigators say internet searches connected to his email account shows he looked up if bleach or vinegar could destroy DNA. On April 21st, the same account conducted another search for the most forested part of Houston. Several days later, on April 27th, oh my goodness, no, no, we don't need that. That's not what I'm doing. Anyways, I hate it when they just start up and then you can't stop it. But anyways. Several days later, on April 27th, his account searched how to delete your history completely. The next day, documents say the account searched for multiple ways on how to get away with murder. He also looked up 15 cheapest places to live in the world, $1,000 a month. On May 3rd, his account searched if police could check the phone records of a missing person and if police can unlock a phone during an investigation, according to the documents. Those searches came days after Johnson's bloody phone was found in Bear Creek Park. On May 13th, he was taken into custody during a traffic stop. He was not charged after the traffic stop. He was released, but a cell phone in his front pocket was seized. Documents say the cell phone contained a photograph of a dismembered female in addition to three photos of deceased individuals. So we might have a serial killer, right, on our hands. The individual in the photos were not identified and no metadata was associated with them, okay? So I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna cut this off and I'm gonna come back to you guys. Moral of the story, this young lady was a sex worker, 
let me get a little close to the mic so you can understand what I'm saying. This young lady was a sex worker. She posted an ad on an escort site. She had gone down to Houston looking for work in a strip club. Y'all got to stop gambling with y'all lives like this, young ladies. What are y'all doing out here? See, this little thought culture, it's not cute. It's very dangerous. Very dangerous. You don't know who these people are. You don't know who these men are. You are just going because they promising you, from what I understood from other articles, it was $500 in it for her. He was going to pay her $500. He ordered the Uber for her so that she could come to where he was to do whatever it was that they agreed that she was going to do for that $500. And she's not alive. She's not alive. Now her family got to deal with that. Her father apparently knew what she was doing, but she grown. She 24, you know, I'm pretty sure as a father, he didn't want her doing that. No father does want they little girl out here escorting and basically being a prostitute. You can pretty it up and fancy it up with different words, but it's prostitution. No father wants that for their daughter. But when she's an adult, it's not much you can do. Tell her to be careful. But they out here getting it how they live. Y'all are out here getting stuff how y'all live. Oh, girl, yeah, I'm going to just make this quick money. I'm going to make this quick money. I'm going to use my body. I'm going to use my sex. I'm going to use, I'm going to make this quick money. Yeah, it's a guy over here that'll give me five. It's a guy over here that'll give me three. It's a guy over here that'll give me six. Whatever the amount is, let me go over here and make this quick little dollars so a girl I can get these couple of hundred dollars, blah, 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 blah. And not thinking that this, this is dangerous. This is dangerous. I am going somewhere in a city I don't, come on, I don't live in. They said she's from California. I'm in a city that I'm not familiar with. I am putting ads in an escort you know, service. These are strange men who are calling to, to get escorts, to come to them, to have sex with them or whatever. I don't know them. They could do anything to me and nobody knows where I went. Nobody knows who I was talking to. They actually said on another, um, on another article I was reading that she had left the club with that guy. And then later on, I guess she went on to the hotel. He they can hook up later or whatever. So for $500, she's not breathing. He more than likely dismembered her in an attempt to hide her body after he killed her. And if he's got pictures in his phone of deceased individuals, this is likely a serial killer. This is a dangerous game. The city girls out here got y'all thinking that this is, you know, we going to finesse dudes and blah, 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 blah. And they, and they too stupid to figure it out. No, this is, this, this is hauntingly like the Mercedes Moore case. This guy has spent money on her. She probably didn't like that guy. She was just get, fleecing him for the money. Yeah, you know, you can see a little booty, little titties, little whatever, you know, whatever. You can feel on it or whatever. Probably dismissing that guy. That guy probably fell in love. He is not mentally stable. Played him one too many times. He showed up at her door. Her dad, her daddy had to come find her in that apartment. Gone because she wasn't answering her phone no more. Now this young lady's father got to try to hope, hope that they find this guy that's on the run and Find her body, because that's what they're looking for now. They're looking for her body. Because you want to be out here. Because you want to be out here. You don't know these people. People can be anybody. They can be anybody. And unfortunately, she ran into anybody. And this anybody deleted her probably in a very gruesome way. If her DNA is all over the place and he had cuts on his hands, she's probably fighting him. 
she was likely fighting him, fighting for her life in a situation where she thought she'd be there for a couple of hours and going back to the hotel with $500, maybe more. Don't let the city girls get y'all caught up. Before I sign out, um, I'm going to draw everybody's attention to the Black Lives Matter petition that we have. Hopefully we can get over 3,000 uh, signatures. We're super close. So please sign, share, and contribute to that petition if you can. We are holding Black Lives Matter as an organization accountable for the 90 plus million dollars that they misappropriated. Um, and sound off in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production and I'll catch you guys on the next one.